Doctor Who Season 22 review. If you want to watch any of the other reviews, click up in the corner now. I'll leave a link to the playlist of every other season review, starting from Season 1 all the way to Season 21. In season 22, they changed the format of the show completely. Instead of getting, say, 28, 20 summer episodes, they're all 25 minutes long each. Uh, we got 13 episodes, which were 45 minutes each, which is essentially exactly the same as the new series. But I'm just going to be talking about the stories, really, in this, as opposed to the actual format of the show. So, Attack of the Cybermen. Uh, the Cybermen seem really weak in this story for some reason, to the point where like one bullet could kill them, or you know the the Cybermen shouldn't be killed that easily, and they were, which is a shame. It's nice how they return to Telos. This is the first time they've even referenced Telos, I think, since Team of the Cybermen. They obviously return to L L London with Totters Lane and stuff like that. You've got uh, the Tenth Planet referenced. There's a lot of nice references in there. <laughs> the Cyber Controller. He was played by the same bloke as the guy that played him in Tomb of the Cybermen. And by this point he's put on a lot of weight. So I must say the Cyber Controller did look a bit... Fat. I feel like them trying to change the TARDIS exterior. It was nice that they tried to make the change. It didn't work but I'm glad they tried. The Cryos just looked absolutely terrible. They looked like they were straight out of the web planet or something. There's a lot of death and a lot of gore and I don't mind this. I know this story is criticised a lot because it's got a lot of gore and death in it but I think it works really well in Doctor Who. I think it's it adds more threat and it just adds more excitement in general. But overall it's quite a good story. I think it is quite underrated generally. Vengeance on Varos. Uh, it's a really intriguing idea for a story where they've got people that like the general public or watch on TV, people being executed and stuff like that. It was a really good idea. I feel like it's taken from somewhere else, but I can't really put a finger on what that thing is. Then again, these general public had loved Logan Paul. The whole story is quite dark, um, and I love the Doctor in it. There's not really much else to say about that, but I did really enjoy the story. The Mark of the Rani, this is another one that's really sort of generally underrated. I love the contrast between the Doctor, the Master and the Rani, the Doctor being the good guy, the Master being the bad guy and the Rani being not necessarily either but she just she won't stop at anything until she's got the results of her experiments out of the way. I couldn't help but laugh at the Doctor being rolled away by those people but again I've not really got much else to say other than that. I did enjoy the story in general, I thought it was really fun. The two Doctors, now this one is very overrated. Um, I think the reason it's overrated is just because it's a multi-doctor story and not because the story is good itself because it's not. There's a lot of plot holes and inaccuracies. Again, I know the season uh, season 6B exists, but the fans shouldn't have to rely on their own theories. Things like this should be said in the actual show. You know, how did Jamie know about the Time Lords? Because this was presumably set before the War Games. I think it's too early in the Sixth Doctor's tenure to have a multi-Doctor story. Colin Baker hadn't even established himself as the Doctor properly by this point. And the second Doctor was used really badly anyway. Um, the way that he was just, he was used for comic relief for a lot of it as well. Um, the Suntarans looked absolutely awful. I feel like that's an ongoing theme. In the Time Warrior they looked absolutely fantastic. But come this story and the invasion of time, they don't look as good. The story wasn't too bad at its heart, like the plot wasn't bad but all the negatives outweigh the positives for me. Uh, and then we get Time Lash. It was, it was fucking awful. Um, it was written as a sequel to a non-existent story. It didn't work at all. The characters were boring. The plot was awful. The Borad was essentially just the Elephant Man. And I wasn't really a fan of the HG Wells stuff, essentially saying that this is what's responsible for him writing the Time Machine. Uh, no, it was awful. Don't watch it. And then Revelation of the Daleks. Um, it was quite disturbing the way you've got humans or humanoids, I don't know if it's ever mentioned that these are actual humans, that they're being turned into Daleks, into a new race of Daleks. This is where the Dalek Civil War begins. I know it was sort of referred to uh, about, the, about Davros creating a new race of Daleks back in uh, Resurrection, but in this one, this is where you actually see it to start. You've got the older race of Daleks, which are just the pure Daleks, and then you've got Davros's new race of Daleks, 
which are the Necros Daleks, and neither of them think the other type of Dalek is pure, but the Necros Daleks aren't pure, so that, that's why they've got hatred for each other, because they're too different. I don't understand why the Doctor didn't just get out of the way of that uh, statue when it was falling down. He was just stood there like... <sighs> And that, that was a cliffhanger, it, it wasn't very good. It was the first time Davros and the Daleks actually flew. I know people, I know a lot of people say the first time was in Dalek. I know a lot of people say the first time was in Remembrance. This is the first time you see them fly. Watch it and you'll see it's the first time they flew. It was the first time Davros had lightning coming out of his fingers. I think that's better known in Journey's End. This is where Davros loses his hand and from here on out, I know uh, Remembrance you don't see it, but from here on out you see like him always have metal hands and this is why. As I said, it's the start of the Dalek Civil War. I think that's a really good way for the show to go. It's very different and it worked really well, I think. Um, and obviously you see a lot more of that in Remembrance, so I can't wait to get to that. And I love the Doctor in the story. I think the sixth Doctor in general is really underrated. I, I think a lot of people don't like him, mainly because his stories were bad. But to be honest, a lot of his stories weren't bad. Time Lash was really bad, Twin Dilemma was really bad. Two Doctors was quite bad, but I mean, stories like Vengeance on Varos, Attack of the Cybermen, Mark of the Rani, Revelation of the Daleks even. Really good stories, really strong stories, and the Sixth Doctor work really well in them. So it's a, it's a shame when you see him on the, on the bottom of all these lists. But yeah, that's season 22 in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave it a like. If you didn't, leave it a like. Um, and I'll see you in... I don't, I don't know what the next video is going to be, but I'll see you in it anyway. See ya.